Okay, great. Thank you. Good morning, Coach Anderson. How are you? I'm good. Good morning. Thank you very much for joining us. Coach, before we get to questions, um, can you just start us off with your thoughts on last week's game against Coastal Carolina? Well, any win's a good win, and uh, it's good to be back home. You know, have it, uh, our schedule's been been strange and have not played at home in seems like a month. Um, so uh, I, I thought we improved and, and did some things better. Uh, maybe our best special teams performance uh, of the season in terms of just all four phases. Uh, and, um, you know, we, we, we gave up some yards defensively, but we, we found a ways to get stops when we needed to and, and make them try to kick field goals. We, you know, we're stingy about letting them in the end zone. And, um, and then offensively, uh, I was the, not to turn the ball over at all and to be able to uh, put the points up we needed to, to to stretch things out and get a win. So pleased with where we're at. Still think we've got better football ahead of us. Uh, I do think we're improving. And, uh, you know, I think we're becoming more and more uh, of an experienced team each week. And just guys have, uh, are playing better than they did a few weeks ago. And that's that's encouraging. Um, you know, we got a tough test, short week, with uh, with a good football team coming in to, to play us on Thursday night. And it was a very physical game Saturday night, to be honest. We, we got a lot of bumps and bruises that we have a very short period of time to get ready for. But uh, we've been successful on Thursday nights and – in the last couple of years, and we're gonna we're gonna stick to our format and our plan and how we get ready, and have confidence that uh, that our guys will be excited and ready to play on Thursday night. Coach, when you look at the Raging Cajuns, what stands out to you about this team? Yeah, you know, I think Hud is just he's built a big physical football team. Uh, he's uh, he's got a good recruiting area where he can get size and, and just body mass, and they're just they've got length and size. They've, they've always been one of the most powerful teams in the league, and this group. You know, there's no exception to that. They've got size even all the way out at wide out and length. So, uh, you know, you've got to be ready for a physical football game. I think it's the way they prepare their guys. It's it's the the uh, maybe it's you know just his nature coming from from the SEC at, at Mississippi State. But they they've recruited big guys. They they play a power type of football and they play a physical type of football. And on top of that, it's it's become a really good competitive rivalry. I mean, it's always it's always uh, heated and emotional and Regardless of the records, regardless of what's going on, you can expect it to be a hard-fought, close game. So I'm glad we get to play it at home, and it's on a national stage in front of everybody to see. Sorry, Coach, thank you. We'll go to questions now with Matt Roberson of the Jonesboro Sun. Morning, Coach. Um, Morning. Could you uh, give us an update on Warren Juan, kind of what his situation is now? Uh, well, it's definitely an ankle sprain, and it's day-to-day. Uh, if I had to put a number on it, I'd say it's 50-50 as to whether or not he's ready to go on, on Thursday night. If it was a Saturday game, I, I'd, I'd feel like we'd have a lot better chance, but uh, obviously the quick turnaround is going to be tough, and I just don't know that that's going to be possible. You know, at, at this point in the season, um, I guess how pleased are you with uh, just the success that you guys have had running the football so far? Well, I think, uh, you know, we we, we had a – you know, pretty good night Saturday night. I think around 190 yards, and and uh, even even the other night at Georgia Southern, when you take the, you know, the snap over the head of the uh, quarterback. I mean, we we had better numbers than the stati- statistics indicate, and our average is good. You know, we're willing to take what you give us, which means we're we're going to run it against good looks and not just run it to run it. But I think we've improved. I saw, you know, if you watch the tape. Uh, and you really analyze it. I mean, we're getting better uh, at, at the techniques we need up front. Our three young guys on the interior played better than they had previous weeks. Uh, we got a spark from a couple guys that hadn't got a lot of carries in the past, even a guy like Chauncey Mason come in. So I think it's a steady improvement. Uh, and I don't know that we're going to be a team that rushes for 300 yards each week, but if we can uh, if we can average you know, 150, 200 uh, yards a game to go with what we're able to do and, and with the weapons we have in the pass game. I think that keeps us balanced and and it uh, and it helps us move the chains. I I do think a big part of our success this week was was Justice's ability to run the ball as well, and that's another that's another weapon you got to prepare for. You know, at this point, um, any any thoughts on the development of the offensive line? Kind of was just where they stand so far. I, I think it's been steady. I do. You know, I think both the tackles are veteran guys with a lot of snaps under their belt. Even though they're new to us, they've played a lot of snaps. You know, JP started in the Big Twelve, a uh, handful of snaps, and 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 Leonard 
uh, you know, played a couple of years of JUCO ball before coming to us. So they've they've had a lot of snaps under their belt, and I think they just you know are are uh, more mature and, and experienced. Those three inside guys have not played many, and I've seen steady improvement. They played their best game this week. Uh, they you know we got more moving up front. They 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 handled movement better. Uh, we were more physical with those three spots and. I think it's just a matter of time for them. They're all going to be good players uh, and, 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 and be really have good careers for us if they can stay healthy. But I, I do believe that we've seen improvement, and I think we've we've done things to allow them to be um, to be successful and adjusted schemes, you know, slightly throughout the course of the week to really give them uh, the best chance for success. And, and um, you know, I think they're they're getting better because of. Um, last question: If if Warren is unable to go Thursday, uh, what does that do to your your running back situation? Who moves into those roles? Well, I think it probably give Chauncey Mason a chance to get more snaps. Jamal and and Silky are both doing a great job. We've still got Armand Wayway that that is healthy now that has not been utilized and could be uh, could be thrown in the mix. I mean, typically, you know, three guys is kind of what we expect to get the the, the load of the reps uh, on a given Saturday if we're getting. You know, if we're getting 80, 85 snaps, you know, this past week and the week before, due to the triple option teams, we didn't get as many snaps. We still got 74 this week, which is not normal against a triple option team. But uh, I would say that that we feel comfortable with what we've got. I mean, hate to hate to lose Warren if we do, but it encouraged to see how well Chauncey played late, and even just a couple of times we put an arm on uh, Wayway on the field in in the last couple of weeks. And he's done a good job. So it'll be it'll be by committee. Somebody else has got to step up. All right. Thank you, Coach. Sure. Thanks, Matt. We'll go to questions now from Luke Matheson with RedWolfReport.com. Hey, Coach. A little bit earlier, you talked about this game against uh, Louisiana and how it's basically it's a rivalry. We all know what happened down there last year. You guys didn't play the best game and had the touchdown overturned on. Uh, right there at the end of the game. Is that something that you guys are talking about this week to kind of, you know, remind the team, hey, this is what can happen and to kind of motivate them a little bit? Well, number one, they they don't need any motivation for this game. It It, it is a rivalry. We, it's become a really good competitive rivalry uh, out of uh, uh, over the last years. I think it's one of the, the best rivalries in our league, uh, and, and they, they firmly remember what happened. But uh, it, it won't be hard to, to, to have that conversation. They'll uh, – you know that we watched the video from last year's game as part of our preparation anyway, and we'll, we'll we've already talked about uh, you know the, the the potential for uh, you know having ups and downs throughout the course of the year. I mean, you've got to come ready to play every week. This last week has been probably the great the best reminder of anything, in the sense that you had four or five top ten teams get beat by underdog opponents. And you know this situation, it's not even going to be an underdog. I mean, we're both coming in just to like both competitive, trying to fight uh, for, you know, our, our spot in, in the conference race. And, uh, and, and like I said, these guys, you don't have to, you don't have to talk to them about Lafayette. They know, they know who's coming. They know it's a rivalry. They expect it to be an emotional game and, uh, and to be a physical 60 minute game. Last two weeks, your defense has gotten to the quarterback, but also created turnovers. Uh, how do you feel they stepped up over the past couple of weeks? Well, anytime you can get points from defense, that's a huge bonus. Uh, the turnovers are, are, you know, basically kept us in the game against Georgia Southern because we turned it over ourselves this week. Uh, the pressure, you know, there were a couple times that I thought Coastal had schemed up some guys, getting them open, and they couldn't get it off. I mean, that's huge to eliminate an explosive play before it starts and put them behind the chains. Uh, I think we've got one of the pass ru- best pass rushes in the country uh, and collectively and obviously one of the best pass rushers in the country. And Javon, and you know, being able to get them in positions where they have to throw, and then let guys, you know, tee off and create pressure is is really important for us. And I think that we've had steady improvement. We, we're getting there more and more and more each week. And some of the guys that uh, have not played a lot, a guy like uh, Ronheem Bingham, a guy like Christian Howard, William Bradley King, those guys are starting to uh, find their niche, find their their. Uh, you know their their feet a little bit underneath them and starting to make plays as well. Y'all knew that Caleb could do it. Y'all knew that uh, that Javon could do it. Some of those other guys are stepping in and creating some big plays as well. And I mean it's um, you know we're at our best when we're able to go go after the quarterback. Uh, 